from Oregon. It's uh, me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm on Earth, too. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing quite well. Um, got done doing some homework, and I uh, actually automated the website. Before, I was just manually copying and pasting the videos uh, from the YouTube channel onto the main page of the website, um, talkswithg.com. And that was obviously a waste. It's like, wait, I can program this to automate itself and just automatically grab the videos from the channel. Uh, so that was good. I did that. Uh, it works from what I can tell. Um, so it's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, so I told you that uh, yesterday I talked a little bit about roads and geography and some things. Um, and I'm not going to talk about that right now. I, I'm going to talk about the Martian. I'm just going to go right into it. Uh, so The Martian. The Martian is a video. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a great... <laughs> As Trump would say, it's a great video. It's going to be great. Except there's no walls on Mars. <laughs> uh, and he didn't get there on a, on, a, on, a, on a ship with his name on it. So I don't know how good that is. Uh, so, uh, I watched The Martian, <laughs> and I forget the guy's name, he, not the actor, the guy's character. You guys obviously know it by now, You're, you guys are probably like, oh, it's obviously this guy! It's, <laughs> I forget, I forget. Um, but, uh, Matt Damon, brilliant job. I'm not going to talk about reviewing it as a film, though. Um, I have taken a several film... Uh, film classes in college and in high school, and I, I, I can somewhat, you know, critique a film. But that's not what I'm interested in about. You can go watch people who majored in English have video to YouTube channels and opinions on it. Um, so instead, what I'm going to talk about is, um, I, th I thought the video was important. I thought The Martian was important. I think we'll look back on it um, in an important way. I think kind of the same way we... We kind of look back at Star Wars, we kind of look back at, uh, you know, not Gone with the Wind. I hated that movie. Oh my god, did I hate that movie. Was it important? Maybe. Well, of course it was important. Do I need to watch it again? No. Uh, and then there's like, obviously, Casablanca, really historic films. Um, and I'm not, I don't know if The Martian will ever really be that historic, but I think it will definitely be one of the biggest videos or movies that will last its for many years, um, it's kind of quietly, not not in a big bang, um, because uh, I think what the Martian did and what it does more than any other film, it it, it struck me. It struck me about two thirds into it. The thing the thing I walked away when I walked out of the movie theater, the thing that crossed my mind. Absolutely. Um, right away, and it stuck with me, was, wow, we could do this tomorrow. We couldn't do it today because the movie got out at like 11.30 p.m. <laughs> so, I don't know how much time you have to do it. So, tomorrow. <laughs> Which is only 30 minutes away anyways. But I, I, I walked away from the marsh. That was the biggest thing. I walked away from the marsh and was like, wow, we could be doing that right now. We could start that tomorrow. Everything within re now. There's a few things that are a little off um, in terms of the technology, but not really. There's nothing about it at all where I was like, "That's not possible," or where there was. I even. I don't even think there's any real economic constraint there. Um, was the ship that they take to travel, you know, really long distances? The ship that they take, you know, like the hub from from Earth to Mars. Was it huge? Yeah, of course it's big. Um, but you would assemble it in space anyways. Um, and you would engineer it in space. It would make it a lot cheaper to do it that way, aside from getting the materials up. Um, you could just get the raw materials there, and you can engineer it and make it in space, and then you don't have the cost of gravity. Um, that was the biggest thing. Was everything in the movie, even the, even the Mars base, was more than reasonable to make and manufacture and invest in. Would it cost hundreds of billions of dollars? Yes, of course it would cost hundreds of billions of dollars. 
Uh, but if you just take a look at just how much we spend every year, we spend hundreds of billions on, on, on things that are just, it's a complete waste. Um, and why we spend less than 1% of our, 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 our dollars uh, as, a, as a nation, in the public sector at least, investing in this, it's not right. It just really is not right. Every single technology that we have in some way was affected and accelerated, not just created, accelerated uh, because of vast investments and improvements and discoveries made through the NASA and the space program. And, and things even past, um, even past the space race and, and getting into uh, uh, the first person on the moon. Um, there's, there's really, really very little to no argument to not fund NASA. It inspires the nation, it, it advances technologies and accelerates things. It drastically commoditizes costs and inputs of costs for um, propulsion technology, electronic technology, and we have computers because of NASA. We have so many plastic derivatives because of NASA. Um, vacuum, vacuum packaged foods. Uh, you, there's really nothing that you can look at and as a nation in the long run cost of a macroeconomic scale and I've, I have somewhat studied some of these equations. Um, is it expensive up front? Yes, of course. Uh, but nothing worthwhile that is cheap. Okay, you get what you pay for, quite literally. But once you do that, you dramatically commoditize the cost of inputs for so many other derivative technologies in terms of consumer goods and and just so many other things that aren't even related to consumer goods. Just a lot of the technologies that go into industrious applications that would be used in any number of industries. Um, I think one of the biggest things also, that aside from the fact that it is certainly possible, the other thing that I learned about it was that um, I think we have a lot to learn about the optimization of resources. Uh, the Earth is finite. Uh, and, you know, People always argue about, I don't know how you could, I don't, it, it is no longer reasonable to argue against the, or even credible, to argue against the, the fact, the literal fact that we are drastically increase, increasing CO2 in the atmosphere. Uh, it is, what's the causality of that or the correlation of that uh, with recent increases in, in, the, in the earth, in the, in the temperatures of the ozone or of the atmosphere of the earth and the melting of the ice caps. That's a different discussion that really is completely different. Um, but we are pumping way too much CO2 in the atmosphere and, and we really don't know what the consequence of that is. It's not that there's this whole global warming thing, it's just that it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's even less, it's even more simple than that. It's like we know, we can study the atmosphere of Venus. We study the atmosphere of all kinds of planets, even ones that aren't even in our solar system. And we know that putting CO2 and other chemical compounds, gas compounds, in the atmosphere has drastic changes on all forms of life and biology or, or even the potential for any kind of life on that planet. Um, and there are a large number of risks. At the end of the day, it's like, even if, if we don't even know how much, if at all, the Earth is actually warming because of our own uh, output, it's not even worth the risk of even trying and seeing how much of an, of an effect it, it will or will not have. Because if we get it wrong, if we get it wrong, forget it. And, and it's not even worth the 1% chance. Even if there's less than 1% chance that anything bad would happen by continuing to pollute and consume large, uh, literally oceans of oil. It's not even worth the chance of risking it. And um, you see that really clearly in the movie of The Martian. I think we would benefit greatly by learning how to allocate our resources very efficiently because we, the one thing that also noticed me is like, once you're on Mars and you're living there, you're stuck. You have to use every single ounce of food and water and oxygen that you brought, that you brought and, and took over there, uh, and that's all you have. And there would be a, a huge increase of, of efficiencies and so many other different technologies and applications just by doing that, because you have to. Because if you don't, you die. It's very simple. If you don't do it, you die. Um, 
The only thing that I didn't quite like about the, the movie The Martian that I thought was a bit, um... The only real big, the, the big constraint that I noticed in terms of that being a reality was probably the efficiency of the solar panels on Mars and the battery technology on Mars. I don't know that the movie doesn't go into it. The movie doesn't talk about, you know, what uh, percentage of efficiency the solar panels have, and which is really the, the main... I believe it's the only main driver of energy for the for the base. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but the movie doesn't go into that. It doesn't go into how efficient they are, how good they are, how advanced that is, and the batteries that they use to have on the um, on the rover, I suppose, or the essentially a, it's a Tesla Mars version of an SUV. Um, the, the 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 film does not go into how good those batteries are. But, even with our current batteries, uh, it's very doable. We might have to bring more batteries, or we might need to have to use and consume more solar panels uh, than what is displayed in the movie. Um, but there's nothing about it that was in the future. And I have never really seen a sci-fi sci movie like that in any real way. That's the, the big difference between that and Interstellar. Interstellar phenomenal movie, movie, one of the first and only movies that actually completely blew my mind. <laughs> but um, the pro it's not a problem, it's a characteristic of the Interstellar was that it's very obvious that when you watch Interstellar, that's many years away. That's at best. It's like, that's like, we don't even know. We don't even know when or if that would ever happen in the way that they did. Um, and that's the problem, I think, with a lot of space movies, because you see Contact, I really like Contact, and then you have Armageddon, and, you know, you have all these other movies, and none of them, do you watch them, and you're like, okay, this is possible. And that was the biggest thing that I noticed with The Martian, is that as soon as I watched it, as soon as I watched it, it was, that's possible now. Why we're not doing it? Well, go ask your senator, your congressman. Like, they're going to do anything about it. Um, and that was the biggest thing that I noticed. And it was a great movie. It was a great movie. I recommend anyone to see it. It's definitely kid-friendly. There's a few instances where I can see why you might, you know, if your kid's 10 or more, just go take them. I, I don't know. I don't remember any of the cuss words. I don't think there was any, any swearing involved. Um, it was just a very good movie. And I wanted to share that one tidbit. That's why you see The Martian. You see The Martian to see why it's a very stark and clear message we need to do this why haven't we done this now there's no reason not to it's all political there's no economic reason not to there's no real constraint as to it not being possible it's purely a political issue as to why we haven't studied it further um, and there's a lot of information that the government definitely is not disclosing to us or not being honest about that is very much true um, but I don't want to go into that. There's, there's a lot of really bad stuff going on, especially when it comes to alternative energies, um, that can be used for not using coal. And now, now don't get me wrong, I love cars, I love gas, I'm not, and I'm not a liberal either. <laughs> Make that be known. I'm not a liberal, I'm not a registered Democrat, that's it, I'm not a registered Republican either. Um, but, uh, the, the biggest thing that people uh, forget when we talk about the consumption of oil, and it's very simple, it's called the squared, squared cube laws. Squared cube law, um, essentially, the problem with creating an economy that solely focuses around the demand and production and consumption uh, of oil and, 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 and coal and other types of derivatives from ancient dead plants is that to make another increase to provide that extra barrel of oil, the infrastructure, okay, the, <coughs> excuse me, the coal mine or the, the rig pumping out the oil, the, tr the train tracks, the, uh, the interstate highway system, the ships, uh, for every one in unit increase, you have another squared unit on top of that, another multiplier. 
So essentially, you know, if you to increase this another two units, you need to increase the infrastructure by four times to get that marginal increase. And the problem with that is that eventually it's all over. I mean, you, you, you can't keep keep up with the demand. If you take a look at the energy demands, just on a per, you know, the, the amount of watts we're really consuming by the year 2050, you can't do that. That will, that's what people do not want to admit when we talk about, do we only have plenty of oil on the earth? Yeah, we do, if our demands stay the same, but demand is infinite. First off, you have to remember that. Demand is infinite, and demand is only constrained by supply. I can easily imagine having a, 10,000 private jets. That's really not hard to imagine. It's just one private jet times 10,000. That's I can easily demand and want that. Am I going to fly in all of them? Probably not, because time is finite. But can I easily demand that? Can I want that? Of course I can want that. I just did. I just said I wanted it. So there you go. So demand is, is always infinite. That's the number one thing you learn in, one of the number one things you learn in economics. And it is, it is supply that constrains, constrains demand. And uh, when we talk about the consumption of oil and, and fossil fuels, uh, you're re no one who is a proponent of continually using them it can not, generally acknowledges in most conversations that you see and read about um, the infrastructure that's required to get that to the end consumer and the, the you know, exponential increase of having to create and support the infrastructure on top of just getting that single barrel, the next barrel of oil, the marginal increase in barrel oil to, to the world. So that was interesting. Not that I'm against oil, I'm not at all. Uh, we have to use it to invent new technologies such as solar power, whatever the next thing is going to be. Um, so we have to use it, but we have to use it wisely and we're not. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that was it. That's the Martian. That's oil. That's things. Uh, send me some videos. I'm, I'm, I'm really desperate to just have some kind of conversation uh, with someone. I just like to, you know, send me something. And uh, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. Subscribe. Do that. I'm going to start. Well, I don't know if I'm going to start doing it all the time. Subscribe. Let me know. Tell me things. I'd like to hear back.